So photosynthesis is the process of making glucose or sugar from carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And in the process of making the sugar, oxygen gas is also created um, and released as a byproduct. So in order to do photosynthesis, we first have to gather the ingredients, right? So you have to be able to get take in this carbon dioxide to gather the water as well as the sunlight. And so for plants, water is taken up mainly through the root systems. CO2 or carbon dioxide is taken in through holes in the leaves. And sunlight is also absorbed by the leaves. And so the broader the leaf, the more sunlight that that leaf can take in and the more photosynthesis can happen. And so there has been sort of an evolutionary modification to make plants have bigger, broader leaves, or additionally have more leaves available so that more photosynthesis can be done, more glucose generated, and therefore the plants can grow larger. And so while water is obviously necessary for photosynthesis, so therefore the roots of the plants are important, when we really talk about photosynthesis magic happening, we're really focusing more on the leaves of the plants. So photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, in particular in a middle layer of the leaves known as the mesophyll. And so if you took this leaf, sliced it in half, and then turned it to face towards you in a cross section, this is what you would see. You would see a layer of cells on the top called the upper epidermis, a layer of cells on the bottom called the lower epidermis, and a whole middle section called the mesophyll, where the plant cells or whether where these mesophyll cells are located. And what you'll notice is that the lower epidermis or that lower layer of the leaf has small openings or holes in the bottom. These are what are called stomata. And stomata are openings that allow gas exchange to take place within the leaves themselves. And so carbon dioxide gas can come in for photosynthesis and then the byproduct, this oxygen gas, can actually come out of the stomata after photosynthesis has taken place. And if we sort of zoom in further into these mesophyll cells, what we'll see is a cell that looks something like this. Typical plant cell containing a nucleus, mitochondria, ribosomes, other organelles, as well as a specialized organelle that's particular for two plants um, and not animal cells, known as a chloroplast. And a chloroplast is just the organelle in plant cells where photosynthesis happens. And so if we took a chloroplast and zoomed in, this is the structure you would see here. It has two membranes, an outer and an inner membrane, and it contains these stacks called thylakoids, which is where um, the photosynthesis reactions take place. In addition, there is a pigment that exists within the chloroplasts called chlorophyll. And this is the pigment that's important for absorbing energy from the sunlight. And chlorophyll can absorb all wavelengths or of sunlight except for green. And so as we know, visible light or sunlight is made up of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet light, or all the colors of the rainbow. And so chlorophyll is a particular pigment that can absorb red, orange, yellow, blue, and violet. But it actually cannot absorb the green light. So it reflects it. And when chlorophyll reflects that green light, that's what gives plants their green color. Because we see whatever light gets reflected back. And so if chlorophyll is reflecting green, we see green. Um, but chlorophyll can absorb all of the other wavelengths easily. And so take a second, read through these different structures and the functions and determine which one is correctly paired. Um, so the right structure with the right function. You can take a minute, pause the video, um, and then come to your answer. Okay. Stomata is the only one that is correctly paired. So leaves don't take in the water for photosynthesis. That would be the roots. And then the chloroplast and chlorophyll functions are switched here. The chloroplast is the organelle, chlorophyll is the pigment. 
Um, but stomata is that hole in the bottom of the leaves where gas exchange takes place. And so we're not going to go into the nitty gritty molecular mechanisms of photosynthesis for the purposes of this class. We're going to break photosynthesis down into two separate reactions, but we're not going to do much more than that. And so this is the level of detail that you need to know for the purposes of this class. And so photosynthesis can be broken down into two parts or two steps, the light reactions and the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle. Both of these steps, both the light reactions and the dark reactions take place in the chloroplast, which is this green structure here. And what's important to note is that the light reactions provide the power or the energy for the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions to take place. We're going to go more into the light reactions on this next slide. Right, and so the goal of the light reactions is to turn sunlight or light energy into chemical energy, which is also known as ATP. And so sunlight is absorbed by particular molecules within the chloroplast, particularly within those thylakoids in the chloroplast. And in the process of taking in that energy, water is split. So remember, water is on the input side or the reactant side of the photosynthesis equation. Water comes in, that energy splits water, releasing some electrons, as well as releasing oxygen gas. In addition, chlorophyll molecules within the chloroplast absorb this sunlight. Both of these processes, both the chlorophyll absorbing sunlight and water being split and then ultimately generating oxygen, release a ton of energy-filled electrons. And if you remember from respiration, there are particular electron carriers that can actually load up just like trucks with these energy-filled electrons and bring them to an electron transport chain. And that's exactly what happens in photosynthesis. There's another electron transport chain contained within the chloroplasts of plant cells that provides the energy to make ATP, which then ultimately provides the energy to power the Calvin cycle. So light comes in to the chloroplast, it's absorbed by chlorophyll. Water is split, oxygen is released. A ton of electrons get excited by the sunlight energy. And those electrons are moved to an electron transport chain with via electron carriers where they can make ATP that's ultimately used to power the Calvin cycle. And so what does the Calvin cycle do? Why does it need power? Or why does it need energy? So you can see ATP here, as well as an electron carrier and ADPH, bringing electrons and energy to the Calvin cycle. Um, and that's because what the Calvin cycle's main function or goal is, is to convert carbon dioxide or CO2 into sugar. And since we're taking a one carbon molecule and making a six carbon molecule, we're doing basically an anabolic process or an anabolic reaction in the Calvin cycle. And anytime the reaction is anabolic or you have to make a molecule, you recall that you need to input energy. And that energy has to come from somewhere. It comes from the light reactions. And so the ATP and the NADPH or the electron carriers bring energy and electrons to the Calvin cycle. And CO2 can enter into this process. Ultimately, the output is glucose or sugar, and this happens in a series of three steps. I'm not going to require you to know the actual molecular mechanism of the Calvin cycle. Um, you just need to know that CO2 will go in and sugar will come out. And the last step of the Calvin cycle requires this energy input or ATP, and that's what comes from the light reactions. So when it's hot or dry in different climates, sometimes the stomata of leaves will close to help plants conserve water. And so in a normal location, those stomata can remain open and carbon dioxide gas can come in easily. And photosynthesis can happen. Um, but in hot and dry climates, those stomata close because the plants don't want all their precious water leaking out. 
And so take a minute, pause the video, and think about what this effect might have, or what effect this might have on photosynthesis. All right. So generally, if the stomata close, those plants don't have access to the CO2 that they need. And so photosynthesis rates will drop. The plants will grow less as a result. And so in order to kind of counteract this decreased photosynthesis rate, plants that live in places that are hot and dry, like deserts, um, and particularly cacti, have evolved a way to do photosynthesis um, at night, right? And so the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions are only done at night. And then the stomata can open to let CO2 in when it's cooler and let oxygen out also when it's cooler and that way the plants lose less water. Right, and so those plants can easily do the light reactions during the day. They can generate a lot of energy and ATP, which is needed for to power that Calvin cycle. And then when it's cooler out, those plants living in a hot, dry climate can open their stomata at night, allow the CO2 to come in when it's cooler. Plants will lose less water this way and the CO2 can be converted into glucose through the Calvin cycle. And what I want to highlight here is just kind of the fact that there's no waste in a natural environment. And what you can see here on the top in green is the photosynthesis equation, carbon dioxide and water coming together to make sugar and oxygen. And on the bottom is the equation for cellular respiration where glucose or sugar is broken down with the addition of oxygen into CO2 and water. And if you look closely at these two equations, they're actually like kind of the reverse of each other. CO2 and water on this side of photosynthesis and on this side of the respiration equation. And the same glucose and oxygen as products of photosynthesis and then ultimately reactants um, in respiration. And so those end products of photosynthesis get broken down to release the energy needed in cellular respiration. And then once energy has been released, CO2 and H2O can actually be recycled and reused to make more glucose via photosynthesis. And so there's this idea that there's no real waste in the photosynthesis and respiration cycle, or this energy cycle, because the products of one reaction end up powering the next one and the products of this reaction end up powering the next one. Um, and that energy can be recycled over and over. Okay. And so this is just one last question for this lecture. Um, which of these processes takes the carbon dioxide and actually converts it into glucose? So take a second, read through these different processes, um, and then come to your answer. It is the Calvin cycle. And so since we're talking about taking carbon dioxide and making glucose, you know it's part of photosynthesis and not respiration. Both C and D, the Krebs cycle and glycolysis, are cellular respiration, so you can eliminate them immediately. Um, and so it's between A and B. And the light reactions are the ones that actually take in the water and split it and generate ATP. Calvin cycle is the process where carbon dioxide comes into it and then glucose ultimately comes out.